Greeting family. We want to officially welcome everyone to the Africa for the Africans, Opportunities in Africa Expo. Let's give yourself a round of applause for coming and being a part of this. This is destined to be a great family reunion. You're going to meet your brothers and sisters. You're going to meet your family. You're going to get to know your family. And we're going to live happily ever after. <laughs> As always in Africa, we like to start off with a minute of silence so we can pray to the Creator. We'd like to call on Dr. Asari to give us the honor. Dr. Asari, please. Whatever position you are in, just be still, breath in the play, and put your mind on the God within you and the creator of all the universe. With gratitude. Let's have some silence. Deep silence. All this person, you know, believe that the creator and the spirit of creation and goodness and gratitude is within us for a successful reunion again this year. So be it. Ashe? Ashe. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sorry. Again, we'd like to welcome you. As our elders are coming in, the great chief Nomo and his wonderful wife. Let's give them a round of applause. I mean, I want to be, I want to be, I want to be and I'm thankful, thankful for our elders because without them there would be no us. I'm really appreciative to Brother Bumani who I met 16 years ago. And he said, David, let us continue to build bridges. And at that time, the late Leon Sullivan was bringing a lot of groups, big high power delegation to, to Africa. We remember that, don't we? He was doing great work. Well, this brother, Brother Bumani, continues the work that he started. Let's give him a round of applause also. <laughs> Let's give him we're going to, we're scheduled to close at 8.30 and we're going to do that. We started a little late, but we're going to, this airplane is going to fly and we're going to land at exactly 8.30. You know, when you get on the plane, you may get on the plane a little late, but you you, you end up landing at your destination on time. We're going to speed it up. <laughs> so all my speakers, you're going to have to paraphrase your, your topic a little bit. Yeah, no, be, no rush, no rush. No rush? Yeah. Okay. Go over a little bit, it's all good. Okay, so Brother Bumani said his group is going to stay longer in Ghana, okay? <laughs> yeah, anybody have a hot day, they could just make it out. <laughs> great, great. So, my name is Brother David Diwara. I was blessed to repatriate to Africa over 25 years ago, and I don't regret it. I like to consider myself blessed in many ways. First of all, I went from sickness to health. When I lived in the West, I was sick eating genetically modified killer chicken. But now I'm a vegan eating organic food, growing organic food on a 50 acre farm that we own. Living on the land, waking up to the sounds of the birds and the bees, and no motorcycles, no cars, no, no fumes, nothing to disturb us. So I'm thankful and I'm grateful to be able to wake up and walk to the avocado tree and pick avocados, mangoes, and bananas. And that's what I want for all of us, to be able to live in this land and eat 
the organic food that we grow and put all those killer chicken and all these burgers out of business once and for all. Can I get a lache on that? Okay. And you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Yeah. <laughs> so moving forward, I'd like to bring forward on the program, again, I just mentioned his name, but I can't stop mentioning his brother's name because he's a soldier. You know, he came to Ghana in 2006, he was smiling, you know, and you never knew, you never know who you're going to be. And Brother Bumani has been consistent, you know, he has been fighting diligently, bringing our brothers and sisters to Africa from all over the world. And I'd like for Brother Bumani to come up and say a few words. So let's bring him up to say a few words about the great work he's doing. All right, the Irene's family, appreciate everyone uh, taking their time to uh, come through and network with us uh, as we uh, build a reconnection from the African diaspora to the African continent. So when you look around us, many of us from many different parts of the world, and uh, I always like to say we, we, we can represent the best energy of the future by with cooperative economics, networking, just doing business with each other, and just connecting and looking out for each other. As, uh, we all have, most of us, uh, for the most part, just have the same goal. We're all looking to see a beautiful Africa where we don't have to stress or worry about going to Europe or America or dependent on like, uh, colonizers. So this is what we're doing as a people. We just do what we need to do, and that's what the energy represents. I uh, started doing Roots and Culture Tours uh, in 2006 coming to Ghana and built, you know, company you know, started coming to a country you don't know anyone, but you're looking for people with the same vision and that's what we have built over the last uh, 14, 15 years. So I just uh, wanted to say, appreciate everybody and uh, this, um, anybody ever want to communicate with uh, me or the group of us that's working on the uh, Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community or Africa for African Stores. I have the cards right over by the door, uh, and it has all of our website information, links, and connection, phone numbers, and things like that, US and Ghana number, where you can reach out to me and connect with me. And that's what I'm looking to do, this always looking to meet and network with new people, and just you know, find ways out we can look out for each other. All right, so enjoy all of the brothers and sisters that we've organized to connect with you. So we can make it easier and more organized for those who want to reconnect to the ancestral land. Thank you. So we're thankful, Brother Bumani, for all the great work to so continue to bring our people home, especially now, you know, especially now, we need them home, all of them, the elders, the children, at this time, if you're on the group with Brother Bumani, we'd like for you to just stand briefly and give us your name and um, you know, where, where you're from, just briefly. If you're, if you're on the group with Bumani, can you please stand? One other time, please. George Barton. Okay. Brother I'm George Barton. I'm from Park. Okay. Good evening, fam. I'm Sheila Angel. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. You can also mention what you know, your profession or your, your, your goals or aspirations. You can also mention that briefly, too. Sure. <laughs> I'm, a social, I'm a social worker. Great. Right. Good evening, everyone. I'm Karen. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and I work in the field of information technology. Very blessed to be here, with a lot to be here, and I'm loving it. My name is Debbie Thomas. I'm from Owensville, Mills, Maryland, and my background is finance and accounting, and I am tired now, and I'm happy to be here. I'm 
So again, as you can see, we have some great brothers and sisters here. They're going to share with you a lot of the knowledge, skills, and understanding that you possibly would need to be successful uh, in Ghana and in Africa. So without further ado, I'd like to bring forth my brother, my friend that I've been working with over the years. Uh, he helped me with the health festival that we did back in the year 2003. Uh, we traveled to Liberia together doing health festival. Uh, when, when you come to Africa, one of the first things you want to do, in my opinion, is to learn how to be healthy so that you can enjoy living here. So Dr. Mon Dr. Asari is going to share with us briefly as we go on how to live in Africa without catching malaria, how, how to overcome any uh, disease that they put on us in the West. Without further ado, Dr. Asari. I hope everybody is happy. Yes. Happy. Excellent. Are you cheerful or happy? Cheerful. <laughs> oh. Cheerful and happy. Good. 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 Um, there are a lot of things about African healing science and nutrition. I was the first person to coin that way. Because in Africa, especially in Ghana, you cannot get health without nutrition. From the day you are in your mommy's stomach, growing as a fetus to a child, our tradition shows certain foods that you must eat, certain leaves that are laced into your soup. Um, people go to bring forth and they say, oh, they have pregnancy-related hypertension. I hope you've heard that. We don't, we don't know of that yet. You are given the right foods to eat, and good food is medicine. So you cannot separate in our system of healing food and medicine. That's why we have certain taboos that are scientific but cannot be understood by minds that are skewed towards slave thinking. But let me put it that way. You know, we took from here to the other part of the world <coughs> kings and queens. We didn't take slaves. Right. From Africa. Nobody was a slave. Right. Nobody was a slave. Slave is a word that has been coined to make us look small. There were kings and queens, and in fact, our shrines that have been disgraced and called all types of names are our universities. They contain so much knowledge. So if anybody wants to learn any form of wisdom, you cannot get the intricate part of that wisdom without the knowledge of the ancestors and the chiefs and our elders hold that knowledge in trust for us. But we go to them, we call them fetish. We put all kinds of names on them. You see, healing is in and out. It's physical and spiritual. When we talk about spiritual, we're not talking about recitation of any magical words or whatever. We are talking about a way of life beyond what the physical eye can see. What will you be remembered for 70 or 100 years when you are gone from this earth? from your physical body. What will you be remembered for? The account proverb says, Saman Pak and Watson Abitin. It is the good ancestor who have turned his back to the next world that you name your children after. It's a 
a form of blessing. Today, we do not even know what is healing. I'm surprised people call traditional health alternative health. Traditional health and conventional health, which one came first? So why should the first rather be alternative? You see, there are a whole lot of things that will make you healthy. Because if you want to be healthy, it starts from here. From our mind. Your mindset alone can kill you. If you are told that, oh, when you eat Gary, your eye will be impaired. And you accept it. The autonomic system will pick it. When you eat Gary, your eye will be impaired. Meanwhile, cassava is used in the treating, treatment of uh, cancer. Today we are so lucky. A lot of the knowledge that was stolen here and said to be Greek knowledge is now on the net. You can Google and see a lot of things that are true. Although they have been put under different names. Because the school system that was given to us by the slave mentality people, which we wrongly call colonizers, they, they were slave traders. Lies. The accounts call them aprofo. Aprofo. People with evil intention. The elders call them Ayavu, the tricky dog. So if you want to start healing, it starts first from here. From how we think. How do we think of ourselves? I have a message for everybody today. And I think without that message, the whole of the meetings and the seminars we have been having for the past 16 years will be all useless. We have to develop a race prosperity index. A race prosperity index. Uh, people say that I don't care how famous, beautiful, or good you are, if your group is looked down upon, you are part of that group. So I don't care how we think we are at the top. If we do not see to the development of ourselves as Africans, and I don't care where you are, from the Caribbeans, the Americans, on the mainland, an African is an African. An African is an African. We are not going to be strangers in our own land. I don't care how our brains have been skewed. Because the tactics they used at first is the same tactics they are using now. Divide and conquer. I've heard some of our brothers and sisters come across. I've heard some conversations. You know, I've been a teacher for 27 years. I can eat drop on conversations to learn. <laughs> I've heard some of our brothers and sisters talking about, oh, you see, when you come together, uh, you must be very careful, you know. The Ghanaians, they believe in tribe, so they see us African-Americans as another tribe. How many of you have heard that? Yes, right, I've heard. That's dangerous. Mm -hmm. If you buy into that, you, 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 I, I heard somebody say he's a psychiatric nurse, right? right. A retired psychiatric nurse. Mm -hmm. If you buy into that lie, it means that you have a psychosomatic disorder. Something is wrong upstairs here. <coughs> and it's the same thing like I see continental Africans going into America and telling their people home that, oh, I, I, I don't want to mingle with the blacks. I, I, I deal only with Caucasians. <laughs> you must be having something wrong here. Because if you help others to look down on your race, you are looking down on yourself. Right. So let's now put it in our mind to develop a healthy state of mind 
by encouraging a race prosperity, a race development index, and work towards it. This is the economics for tonight. Thank you. Great. I mean, he's a great doctor. I mean, he understands the importance of us living together in unity and overcoming the so-called division. Um, we're going to bring up a wonderful sister um, that has moved to Ghana. In fact, we was given citizenship together in 2019 under the year of return. Uh, again, you know, we want to know. We want you to know some of the great souls that's here tonight. Uh, Chief Momo, will you please stand up? Brother Uriel and your wife. Just want y'all to know, brothers came, they, they repatriated some years back and they came down now. That's a lot of knowledge, okay? A lot of knowledge. Uh, Sister Nafshia just came in, will you please stand up, Nafshia? Just came in from the UK, lots of knowledge. She's here to develop Africa. Let's give her a round of applause. Sister Sherry, will you please stand? Sister Sherry is a great sister. She, she, she gives massages. She gets to keep you healthy and strong. Okay? So, straight ahead, our brothers from, uh, from the U.S., by the way, of the Caribbean, now living in uh, Tanzania, big farm, big family. Uh, you're going to be hearing from him also. Brother Ami uh, Tamidia. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> So we're going to bring on the lady to my right, the first one, Dr. Kanita Grove. I mean, this is a great lady from Denver, Colorado, uh, a profession, uh, psychiatrist, psychologist. She was the um, president, former president of the Black Psychologist uh, of Denver. She repatriated to Ghana in 2014 and was given citizenship in 2019. Let's bring on Dr. Kavita. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Okay, keep on. Y'all going to yeah, keep on. Okay. okay. I got you. We have a timer going here, so I have seven minutes. So I hope I can do like Dr. Sorry. <laughs> you were perfect, Doc. <laughs> Man. So one of the things I want to talk to you about if you're looking in the program is the investment piece. And one of the things that I wanted to do was to invest in people and invest in the culture. So one of the ways we, I did that was I formed a, pro, a platform. Um, it used to be on WhatsApp. It's now on OnJoss. OnJoss is a similar to WhatsApp, but it was formed by a Cameroonian brother. So what we do on that platform is, is a two-pronged approach. We want to strengthen global African reunification and we want to help build capacity. So we do that on our platform through very extensive, very progressive networking. And then we also are an information hub for cutting edge, current information that is properly sourced or properly cited. So those are the two ways that we do that. We wrote a book about it, um, about our process, what we do, we brought into it organizational psychology, industrial organizational psychology, group psychology, positive psychology, African psychology, to inform us about how we do why we do. Another way that we invested in the community at large was that we formed a five-year investment club, and we invested in treasury bills. At the time that we started the investment club, the return rate was 31%. And by the time we ended and paid out to everybody just this past February, it had dropped down to about 14%. But 14%, as you all know, is still pretty good for investment for government treasury bills. So we did that. The other way that we invested was that we set up something called SUSU. I don't know how many of you are familiar with SUSU, but it's spelled S-O-U-S-O-U. -S -O -U. And what you, uh, not all SUSUs are created equal. But what we do is we basically take turns. Ours is a weekly susu, some are monthly, some are daily. And what we do is every Monday we take turns loaning each other mon uh, money. So we pay in on Saturday and then it pays out uh, every Monday. So we've been doing that for uh, about close to five years, September to be five years. So that's another way that we've been investing. The other way that we have been investing in Ghana 
is through helping people in business in terms of things like customer service. If you haven't figured it out yet, customer service is <laughs> a little bit lacking in Ghana. <laughs> That's putting, it, that's putting it mildly. And so anything that we can do to help elevate that and bring that up is what we've been working on as well as on our platform. We'd love to hear about organic farmers. Organic farmers are heroes. So I got excited when I heard about you and your cashew farming and all of these things because we know that they're the reasons why we exist and why so many of us come here and lose so much weight and get so healthy and we, we lose our diabetes and we lose all kinds of things because we because of those organic farmers, they're everything to us. Um, I even use the Moringa powder in the toothpaste powder, uh, the tooth powder that I make to brush my teeth uh, that I've been doing for several years. Just came across, put, put together a few recipes that we saw on YouTube. It's all part and parcel of helping us to empower ourselves. The other thing that I personally specialize in is um, something called EMDR, and EMDR stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. And it helps people to rapidly and permanently recover from trauma. When you come here from the States, you may be excited, you may be you know, really stoked and happy to be back home, but what you may not know that the rest of us can see is how broken and how damaged you are. It's just the reality. Don't take it personal, it happens to all of us. You know, it's like when you have bad breath, but you don't know it, but the other person knows it. <laughs> That's kind of what it's like, except a lot worse. So EMDR helps people rapidly and permanently recover from trauma. And so this is another thing that we do to help build up and to invest back into the country. So lastly, the other thing that I uh, personally do, I'm a guardian at heart, and I'm an integrationist. So when I come to Ghana, I come to integrate in the true sense of the word. So where you find a cluster of Ghanaians, you shall find me in the midst. <laughs> because that's my thing. I'm not saying anybody else's thing is wrong, I'm just saying that's my thing and that's what I do. So if you're interested in that, get your phones out, get ready, because I'm gonna give you my phone number. And on our platform, it's not for spectators. And we can get, it's for grown folk, because the language sometimes can get a little strong. So if you're shy and timid, don't even, don't even take my number down. But take my number down. This is, the, well, uh, this is my WhatsApp number, but if you have an Android phone, we can add you to the uh, platform where we do all of this networking and connecting and so forth. The number is 050-479-3843. Again, 050-479-3843. Four, three. I'll say it one more time. 050-479-3843. And that's Carnita. Carnita. C-A-R-N-I-T-A. Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Lastly, I want to say that another way that we invest is we invest in Africa spiritually. So I'm a part of a shrine. I'm one of the drummers at the shrine. And one of the things that we do is we want to keep the shrines correct. Science and spirituality for Africa are happily married. They're not, they're not diametrically opposed. They're happily married. And so at the shrine, we want to maintain the integrity of spirituality and science. And so this is also part of the work uh, that we're doing. So I'm happy to be here. Congrats and kudos to Brother Bumani and Brother uh, Dabi. And thank you all for coming here. Great. Thank you. Family, I'm really happy to be a part of this this great race of people for black, African, Edenic people, Kemet. I mean, we're special. Right. We're so special that we're not even down to COVID-19. So let's give the three of us a round of applause. We're also blessed to have our, our great brother, Dr. Milana, and uh, his legal team with us tonight. Or we're blessed because I was told that he wasn't going to be here. So the ancestors are moving. Y'all, y'all, boy, and the spirits is just blessing us because this is a brother that was able to help us to get citizenship in Ghana through all this hard work over the last 30 years. So we're going to share a few words with us on how we can become citizens. And Dr. Kanita can tell you that 
when you come home and then you get citizenship, that's, uh, uh, that's part of your heritage. And it makes you feel so special knowing that you are really, really a citizen uh, with documents. You know, so that's, that's a great, great um, feeling. Um, we're going to bring on a brother that's going to talk to us, and I've known this brother for years. Uh, Dr. Dankwa, not Dr. Dankwa, Apostle Dankwa. He, he's like a doctor because he heals us when, he, when we get ready to uh, uh, get our land. He's a land expert. Because yep. as you know, when you come to Africa, you need to know people that can help you secure your land, get your deed, and to walk you through the process. So making sure that your investment is safe. And I've heard good reviews on how he saved people many uh, uh, heartaches and, 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 and stopped many heartbreaks and heart attacks by helping the people to, helping our people to secure their land. And as I said, he worked in the land department, he's retired, he wrote books, and he's a walking dictionary on lands in Ghana. Dr. Our brother, Asofu Dangwa. <laughs> welcome especially those from the diaspora and also the guardians who have come to participate in this or guest conference you are all welcome uh, land as we all know is a very important issue because without land you will not be sitting here and you know land in Ghana has got its origin in Ghana Lands are owned by stools, in effect, chiefs who sit on stools, traditional stools. And then when you go to the northern part of the country, they use skins of animals as they are sit when they sit. So they are skin lands, and then the stool lands are the chiefs. And then we also have family lands. It's the uh, aggregate of families which become stool. A typical example is like when you go to Labadi or La, that is around the Trade Fair site, or La Beach Hotel, that area. Uh, we call them La. And there, they are families which come together to form the stool with the chief, who is the, at the apex. But normally, the chiefs don't own the lands. It's the families who own the land. And since they all come under the stools, uh, when you want to acquire land there, after you have contacted the families, eventually uh, the stools have to give their concurrence. That is over uh, overriding power or attesting to the families. And these families, they have uh, what we call administrator of stool lands. When you acquire property from them, uh, eventually, uh, the analysis, whether you're a Ghanaian or an outsider. But in case of outsiders, because you are not a citizen, uh, the duration or the term for the acquisition of land is less. But if you're a citizen, you get more years. Like in Ghana, if you are a citizen, you get at least 99 years. And if you are not a citizen, you get at most 50 years subject to renewal. Now, land, as we know, is a very important issue because land appreciates. You may buy a land today, or you may have a lease of land today at a grand value, which is very low. But as time goes on, you see that the rent or the value of the land appreciates. Now, as you are welcome, you'll be interested in acquiring lands. And then uh, you have to go through a process. So I will take you through the process so that any of you who want to acquire any land within any part of Ghana will know exactly what you have to do. If, for instance, me or Dr. Molana want to give you a land, all what you require from him is a plan of the land. Maybe you will have a, a registered document, but that is not the issue. We can hold on to a registered document. But yes, so the land could be encumbered. When I say it could be encumbered, it means they are these people. Or although he has a document on the land registered 
he might have transferred his interest in the land to someone else. It's only when you get a plan of the land, you go to the land agency, uh, that is a land commission. You go there, you take the plan there, you apply for it officially, you pay a fee, and then they will give you the history or the status of the very land you want to acquire. So you must all take note. Don't just be interested, somebody will go and show you land. Oh, this land is for me. It might be a fallow land, nobody is on it. But legally speaking, the one who is taking you to the land hasn't got the right to dispose of the land. And then also, after the search, when you are satisfied that the land belongs to the person, then the next thing you have to do, you go to the planning department. Because all lands under the various district assemblies or metropolitan assemblies, they have a planning department whereby you cannot just go and develop a land. The land that you are acquiring must fit into the scheme that they have prepared for the area, schools, markets, roads, and what have you. And you must make sure that the purpose for which you are acquiring the land, it could be for a commercial purpose. It could be for residential purpose. It could be for school. It could be for a church. Whatever purpose you want to use the land for must conform with the planning scheme. So when you go and conduct a search and the land belongs to uh, David, don't be satisfied. You must make sure that the purpose for which you want to use the land, despite that is for David, will conform to whatever you want to use the land for. We also got industrial lands. Now when you go by Tema Motorway, you see a lot of the factories and what have you. All of them, they fit into the scheme. Before, when you acquire a land, before you develop it, you must get a development permit or a building permit. Right. First, you get a development permit, and then secondly, you get a building permit. The development permit is when it's taken to the planning, planning department and they approve that the purpose for which you want to develop your land after you have submitted your working drawings. First, when you acquire the land, you get documents or indenture, which will be the evidence between you and the grantor. If somebody is giving you the land, he is the grantor. And you are a guarantee. In the case where you are leasing it, the one giving you the land is the lessor. And then you, who is acquiring the land, is a lessee. And in the case of leases, you have a term. And then you have a ground rent which you pay annually. That will be subject to renewal. As I told you, land appreciates. So when they're giving it to you for 15 years, you'll be paying a ground rent for maybe uh, 200 Ghana cities every year. But after three, four, five years, within the agreement, it could be increased. And so, when you have a lease land, and then you want to also give it out to somebody, you must go in for a, a written consent, because normally they embody it in the document that although the land has been given to you, that if you want to, uh, you give it out to somebody because it's not a free hold because we have not bought it it's not a conveyance when, when we talk of conveyance it means that you have bought the land and you pay for it so it's a free hold there is nothing that the owner who has given you the land could do to it but in the case of lease you have some limitations there are clauses inside the document which you have to so if you want to acquire land, somebody has got a lease. You must also consider the term of the lease. Maybe he's acquired it about 25 years ago, and he's selling it to you. He's left with about 25 years. And so it means why you go in for it, after a very short time, you have to go and renew. And when you are going to renew, the terms will be different. It will be like uh, now going for the land. You have to start everything afresh because your term has expired. Every lease is subject to renewal. It doesn't mean that when they give you the land to you, after the term is over, they are coming back to collect it. That is not the purpose. 
And if you want to go in for agricultural purposes, then uh, they, there's a, a rate which has been set down by the state to encourage farmers to, to plant more food for the country. So it's not just like uh, land that we are going to use for uh, commercial, for residential, for industrial, for school, for churches, and what have you. So on this note, I want to sound a, a word of caution here. Don't mind about your relation with somebody who wants to grant you a land. Be he a chief or what? Follow the procedure that I've told you. Why? Get a plan of the land before you pay anything. Now when you are going for a chief or a family for a land first, you must present some bottle of schnapps. You get in the case. In the case of uh, that why it's not part of the team. Or a petition, yeah. something like that. <laughs> so when you present it to them, then they can sit with you. And then they will ask the surveyors to take you to the land and then show you the land and all this and that. Don't pay anything. Ask for the presentation of the drinks. You can give it to them. You only pay something to them. When you are satisfied that the land has no problem, if the status of it is done, those who are selling the land to you, the family, their names are there, they are there on the land. So on this note, maybe I will end here when it gets to present time, and then I can fit in. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Okay, so, brother there. Let's give him a round of applause for that information. Because it's very important, family, for us to own land in our land. I mean, it's one thing to say that you are an African or a Ghanaian, but you don't have anything with your name on it, okay? It doesn't balance out the equation. It's important because we must have land and we must keep it because if you don't protect what you have, it's like you don't really own it. So the next brother that we're going to bring forward, he's going to talk about food sovereignty. You know, because he, in Ghana here, 70% of our land, according to an article I read in the Ghana papers, 70% of our arable farmland is lying dormant. We're only using 30% of this land to grow food. So that's why we're importing every year into Africa $45 billion worth of food. We're importing $45 billion worth of food into Africa. A lot of it is white rice. Chinese are sending in, uh, I've heard, plastic rice. <laughs> so, bring forth Dr. Uh, brother uh, Edward, Edward Barford. He is the, um, he's a Ghanaian born in Ghana, a Pan-Africanist. He traveled all over the world on behalf of Pan-Africanists. He is the um, director of Ghana Food Sovereignty, which deals with preventing uh, GMO from coming into Ghana, which I also call the devil's food. He is a great brother. He's the chairman of the Black Star Credit Union. Let us bring forth our brother, Brother John Thank you, Brother uh, Greetings, brothers and sisters, and welcome. Thank you. A power to all of you. Well, um, I've done this for about five years. First of all, I want to thank Bomani and his crew, and also David for consistently bringing home brothers and sisters. And I always take the opportunity to say that all of you who are here today are waving the banner of your ancestors past and your future generations to come and that you've completed a journey that there was an ancestor of yours one day who never dreamt that you would regain the dignity that you have and you've come back home you've come back home in your own choice and you've come back home so please let's give yourselves a round of applause if you understand what you need to do. I'm just going to speak about um, Food Sovereignty Ghana um, and a little bit about the Black Star Line. Basically, we all know what's going on with the issue of food. Um, as Dr. Asani was speaking about the nutrition of the African and how the Most High programmed our bodies to be able to use a certain fuel 
to be able to prosper. That the human body is one of the most advanced creations um, that will ever be. It's more advanced than someone's camera phone. The, your, your eye can see pixels uh, for days and days and months and months and you don't have to download onto a hard drive. Imagine how many pictures you've seen since you even landed in Ghana when it was it yesterday. So you can imagine that if this machine requires a certain fuel which the manufacturer endorsed, we're now filling our bodies with all sorts of chemicals, all sorts of types of food, and food sovereignty is about the choice of a people to eat what they feel like eating. Food sovereignty is not just about food security where food is just available. So there's rice. Whether it's imported or it's been sprayed with chemicals or it was grown in an ethical manner or it was smuggled across the border or people were mistreated in growing it has to go to your decision. And so food sovereignty is about Africans taking charge of the food that they eat. Um, this whole geopolitical situation that we see with this um, uh, pandemic is an example of the fact that we can't rely on food to be coming through people's borders. If you're relying on food to be coming through people's ports and borders, then there's something wrong with what we're doing. And as a people, um, we're the only people who realize the disadvantage that we've had for centuries. So as you're coming home, it's very important that you come home with the right mind frame and um, come to do organic farming, come to support uh, entities that are trying to grow their own food, entities that are trying to save the old seeds, entities that are sharing old knowledge. You know, um, Africans were the first scientists, so we know everything about the land, the trees, the birds, the weather patterns, and um, we've been taught to think that we don't know anything. So you have all these new experts coming to Africa, telling us about what kind of crops to grow, Meanwhile, they don't know the nutritional value of the crops that we have discarded. We've thrown away all kinds of seeds and grains. Um, there's a grain called fonio. Maybe you can look for it when you come. Right. And it's, oh, okay. So it's um, an old grain, alkaline grain that we used to eat before we start eating um, the white rice and um, all the new foods that have come in. It's a sister of the sorghum and millet family. But this is very high in folic acid. It's got as much protein as eggs. So you can imagine a kind of grain that lowers your glycemic index for diabetics and so on and so forth. But this is a food that's almost been lost. People don't know about fonio in Ghana. And so when you come home, you have to develop an appetite for the old ancient foods. And we have to support entities that try to revive that old knowledge. So save your seeds, save your old seeds. And... Um, Fonio. Yes, that's for you. And, um, you know, listen to the elders, listen to uh, the people in the rural areas. We live in the cities, but most of the knowledge in Africa is in the rural areas. The cities have been corrupted by the white man's way of life, and so we've discarded most of the indigenous ancient knowledge. But there's a lot of indigenous ancient knowledge in the rural areas. Respect them. Um, you may go to the rural areas and they don't have all the things that we have, but don't forget that we're coming back home and we have to decolonize our minds, we have to desensitize our minds to what you think is right, what you think is okay, and the benchmark and the standards. So support entities like Food Sovereignty Ghana. We have a platform, a website. Um, if you Google www.foodsovereigntyghana.org, we also have a Facebook page, and we've been fighting against the imposition of genetically modified foods into Ghana into our food chain. So we're currently in, in court with the government um, trying to make sure that they don't get, you know, bamboozled by the Monsanto lobby and all those companies that want to sell us new crops that are going to bind us into a, a, a new bondage where you buy these expensive and deadly chemicals that are already created as complements to these seeds. So you have an opportunity to influence our brothers and sisters when you come home because they see you as um, inspirational people coming home having a different experience from what we've had. So let them understand the value of keeping their local traditions, their local foods, and when you come back home, start a backyard garden. Very soon it's going to be so risky, depending on the supermarket. You don't even know what is in the supermarket these days. What they spray on them, what they inject them with. So it's time to start growing your own food. So welcome to Ghana. I hope you have a wonderful time. We also have a credit union, the Black Star Line Cooperative Credit Union, which is 12 years old, and it was formed 
to create a financial legacy institution in honor of the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey. So we also have a website, www.bslccu.org. I see that in the brochure we have the old um, advert, but it's bslccu.org. And um, I'll be available afterwards to take some you know, contact information if you want to know um, some further stuff. But you have to control our finance. We have to keep our finance in our communities like all other races do. So without saying too much, um, I'm thankful for this opportunity. Long live Marcus Garvey. And I also want to recognize Dr. Marlana right next to me here who's done so much great community work. As mentioned, the citizenship, um, the whole citizenship agenda uh, wouldn't have been possible without someone like him. He's, he's been an educator since he came to Ghana. And uh, yesterday we shared a music video um, of some young artists that did a music video about 10, 15 years ago. They're now all grown up. But you can see the impact of the knowledge that they had now. And these are all grown men um, that I know. But if they hadn't had that knowledge, they'll be doing something else today. So please give Dr. Maulana a round of applause. And to all of you who are doing good in Africa, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's give our brother another round of applause. You always support us. And I really thank them, you know, from the top of my heart for the, the sacrifice to come and share with you. Okay, it's not um, uh, a small thing to come through this traffic. Usually it's on a Friday. Uh, the, the traffic may be tough, but they come through here just to share with you. And of course, food is a weapon. If you don't have food, you're hungry. And we don't have to be hungry in Africa. Uh, my new book is out, Healing Rejuvenating Nerves of Africa. We don't have to worry about the vaccine, okay? The sun is the vaccine, and our book is to, is to prevent you from getting that jab, okay? Which is something that you don't really need in my opinion, okay? So we have to be wise and do not depend on the World Health Organization to give us help. Okay. We have to depend on ourselves and our ancestors to give us help and our tradition, Sankofa. Moving full speed ahead. Only time this plane is going to land. <laughs> We're flying high now. We got a beautiful, beautiful crew here. You know, the pilot, you know, co pilot. We got a great sister that recently moved to Ghana. In fact, she came in 2020. You know, that's the that's correct vision. Sister Gina Afoye is a superstar, okay? You know, she have her black love product that she manufactured, an entrepreneur. I love the sisters when they, you know, we can't do, we, our, our sisters is the creative energy that makes Africa really strong. You see, so she's here to share with us all the good things that she's doing with her black love. Her, she's a motivational speaker, so we're going to get really fired up. So without further ado, let's bring forth our wonderful superstar, Sister Gina. Good evening, everybody. I want to thank the organizers for having me uh, this evening. My name is Gina Ifoe, and I'm the one and only African superstar. I'm originally from Columbus, Ohio, and I migrated to Ghana last year by way of the UK. So I just want to share a brief story with you about two gentlemen and missed opportunity. The first gentleman, his name is David, and he is a very meticulous man. He likes everything in its place, every dot over the eye, every T cross. He has a very good friend named Johnson, who contrarily is quite ambitious, he's very visionary, and he's willing to take the necessary risks. These two gentlemen have a dream of owning farmland, uh, which is quite relative to what we've been talking about tonight. Wow. So they have a dream of developing farmland. Johnson comes across this amazing opportunity. There's a man selling uh, about five acres of land on the outskirts of town. We can call it Donchaman, Amasaman, Pokwase. Um, and he has to sell it quickly because he needs money. So he's willing to sell this land for $5,000. So Johnson goes to David and he says, hey, 
there's this fantastic opportunity. Let's take it. Let's let's start our farm dream. Well, David, he says, uh, you know, I'm not sure. The location's a bit far. Now, Johnson is the visionary man, so he understands that growth can happen and he should take advantage of this. Um, and I want you to remember collaboration, okay? So Johnson goes to David, wants him to get on this deal. He says, no, you go ahead, I'm going to wait for a better time. Johnson buys the land, he begins to develop it, he's doing his farming. A decade later, and after quite a significant event in the area, let's call it the year of return, millions of people begin to focus their eyes on their area, okay? And there's been a significant rate of property value on the land that Johnson purchased. Actually, when it's appraised, it's now worth 80,000 USD. So he's gotten a profit of $75,000 in a decade. David, on the other hand, is still waiting. He's still waiting for the opportunity. He's still waiting to make a move. I don't have to tell all of you in this room the importance of the time that we are in right now, 2021, here in Ghana. This is our moment of opportunity. And we have to be prepared to identify and take advantage of opportunities. We cannot accomplish this without collaboration. We have to do this by integrating with the locals, again, identifying the opportunity, and most importantly, implementing the dream. On my YouTube platform, I have a mission statement, which is called SMP. It stands for Strategy, Maturity, and Patience. You can apply it to anything that you are doing in life, and it will help you navigate. But basically, as the diaspora, we have to be very strategic about what we have come here to do and we have to implement our legacy if we want to be successful. So I want to thank you for your time this evening. Um, I also want to encourage you that you will go through the ups and downs trying to establish yourself here. I recently had my platform shut down on YouTube. I had accomplished 11,000 subscribers at the time. And I'm currently in the process of rebuilding my platform and I'm by no way deterred by these setbacks and we are going through cultural differences as well as we are here but you have to be focused and resilient in what you have come here to do representation representation matters a lot of you guys have talked about how you got introduced to the continent through Wilda Maya or Bomani or maybe even some of you have watched me so it's very important that we continue to inspire our peers around the world and showing them how these opportunities are very viable. I want to thank you for your time this evening, and I also want to give a special thanks to my dear friend, Dr. Anita Gross. She, she uh, <laughs> put an honorable mention to have me join you at this event, and I'm very, very delighted. Um, you can connect with me uh, through you know, the social media channels. I am The African Superstar on Instagram, YouTube, I also have a website, www.theafricansuperstar.com, where I sell pan-African products, black love products, and the things to empower our people. So until we meet again, stay black and true. If you ain't black, just stay true. <laughs> I'm motivated. <laughs> Don't stay black and true. Absolutely. Okay, we are winding down. I can't wait to hear from our legal representative, our brother, Dr. Milana. They're gonna uh, close it out in a few minutes. Uh, but I'd like to call up a brother that um, we invited to be here to speak with you. Uh, brother David Fleming, Kwaku. Really met this brother many years ago. Uh, just found out that he have a degree in electrical engineer. Uh, he's someone that, um, it's very knowledgeable in starting business, um, especially with the university. So he'll be able to share with you what he does. I'd like for you to welcome him, Brother Kwee Koo, David Thank you, David. David is the only one I allow to call me David anymore. Um, when I changed my name to Kwee Koo, um, 
I, when I was 40 years old, about 15 years ago, okay, 18 years ago, I, uh, I, I just stopped using David. But I love it because the people who have been in Ghana for 15, um, 15 years, they all know me as David, so it's, it's somehow a blessing to hear that. Um, that's, how, that's, that's been my community. Really, all of y'all up here has been my community. Um, I also received my citizenship in 2019. And, uh, and you know, I think, I'm not sure why W asked me. I think it's because of, of the, I do so much work here in Ghana. My work is with small and medium businesses. Um, I work through Stanford University's program called Stanford C, and we work with about 800 entrepreneurs across Africa. But now I'm working with MESS, which is just another organization. There's a lot of attention and now resources being put into small and medium businesses. And really that's the, the economic engine for a country. And that's why you know, we know that growth, development, economic growth is going to happen because we're starting and growing, that's the most important part, growing our businesses. So, you know, I, the, the thing I love most is just inspiring entrepreneurs, because it's hard. It's hard. Um, but for those who are thinking about coming here and starting businesses, I just want to encourage you, whatever work you might do, let's say if you're in Caribbean or in the U.S. or in Europe, and you have a, have a career doing something, Whatever you, if you have a passion for it still, if you want to get involved in that same kind of business, you will be a superstar here. Because you come up in through trainings, you come up through strong ecosystems, you, you had a lot of exposure. So when you come here, you become an important resource to your industry. So, um, uh, just, a, just, I guess, a word of encouragement. Uh, and then the other side of it is, the reason I came here was, I was asked one day, can you just, it was an assignment, write out your perfect day, describe your perfect day. And I wrote out my perfect day hour by hour. I would wake up, I would have some orange juice from the orange tree, right? I mean, just hour, moment by moment, what I did that whole day. At the time, I was living in the in um, I was living in Kansas City. So when my coach read, it, she was like, "Okay, I see it. This is really interesting." But it says you're in Ghana. I said, "Yeah." So your perfect day is in Ghana. So why are you in Kansas City? That was 2009, 2010. I'm here in Ghana and made it. Here. Um, my point is that for me, and I think for a lot of my sisters and brothers, Ghana has become a place where my dreams can come true. Where I can create the dreams and create the life and lifestyle that matters to me. And um, it may be how all immigrants feel. like. People coming to America from the world, and they can do anything. America is a land of opportunity. Well, I don't know what it is exactly, but it's been the case for me here. So I can create, I can partner with uh, Organic Farm and become a part of that business. I can partner with um, land developers who are developing lands and creating communities for diasporas. Um, I, can, I can partner with, um, NGO organization, the educational N NGO, Pat Wilkins, where you're finding young people who are not in school and their families aren't put in school, but we're able to support, to, to basically usher them and make sure they go to school, and over 15 years have, is that wrong? 20, 21 years, have brought these same students, many of them now, through college, and we've supported them. So, uh, by the way, give Pat a hand for that. That basis in life. What we're doing here is we're building the new Africa. 
right? And everyone by staying clear on their vision and their dream. Um, and combining, because we all have access, actually the shared vision. We all are seeing the same vision, but we have our own part in it. I know I can't succeed on my own. I already tried that. that I can't do it. But I also know that when I share my vision with others and we become a team, and make, we, can, we do, we don't, not only can we make it happen, we are making it happen. So um, I guess that's all I want to say. As, we, as you think about coming and investing, don't stop at thinking about it. This is the land where you we, you can make the thing happen. So just don't delay, just do it. Thank you. And as Dr. Milano would say, you know, this is the center of the earth. You know, maybe that's why it's happening. You can, your dreams can come true because you on the equator and the meridian. So, uh, Ghana is just a, 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 a miraculous place. It's a place where miracles happen. That's what I believe. And uh, it's a place that's destined for us to be. Uh, before we bring on the, our, our great uh, doctor and the lawyer, I'd like to introduce some of the entrepreneurs that's here. Um, starting with uh, my sister on my left, um, Sister P, she's an organic rice farmer from the grocery. Can we stand up, Sister P? <laughs> organic rice farmer from the mountain, okay? From the grocery region, a fantastic region. Um, sister Dr. will you stand up? She works for us, our organic farm, Marina, okay? Um, sister uh, Pat, Pat Wilson, where are you? Okay, she makes fantastic fashions. She was here on time to make sure we support our business. Uh, Sister um, Alita, with the, I mean, she has some fantastic deodorant, the first in Africa. She's been a great in our business, Alita, okay? And then we have um, Sister Monica, Monica Brown. I mean, let's make her, I mean, we have some fantastic, some fantastic, okay? All right, and Sister Arlene, Ar Arlene? All right, let's, let's give up some sort of All right, for Kumasi, Dr. Dickerson, are you around with your good urban product? All right. All right, my sister came in a little late, but you straight. Stand up, let them see you. We're going to nice you. Okay, all right. Uh, did we miss anyone? Uh, all right, let's, let's stand up, let us, uh, let's be counted. All right, good. We want to support these, these are African business that's going to be super business in the future, okay? Super business. Okay, and then we got the Minister of the Future here, Dr. Milan is here, so we're going to uh, sign up for some citizenship while we're here. So let's give them all a round of applause again. Great product, great product. Great product. So I'm going to, Yes. The builders. And the builders are people, great. And other people. Um, great. They're uh, supposed well, we to come and present. Um, is, are they next? Yes, we called for them. They wasn't here earlier. So, Brother Kwame, would you please come and do us the... the, the um... You okay? Okay. You do us. Okay. Uh, we're looking at um, Mac West Construction. Is Mac West Construction here? Okay, we did this earlier, we'll do it again. Uh, Sun Power Innovation. It, Sun Power Sun Power is here. Deep Power Solution. Okay. Dream House Bowel Digester. Okay. Uh, Assange's Construction. Okay. Um, Catherine, Mr. Kingsley. Okay, so. Our perfect road call is clear. All right, uh, fantastic. Twice, okay, so. Twice. There's one more. Ethram. Eth, 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 it's not here, but Ethram was. Ethram, okay, yes. Yeah. Okay, they have the invitation. They yeah, yeah. received the invitation. Great. So, um, let's give Brother Pop and Brother Bumani a round of applause for inviting such a great person. <laughs> 
Yeah, this is a crazy communication thing I'll be talking about. You know, we have to do better. Anyway, let's move forward and, uh, and get the uh, next available yeah, person. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can take a heart to the world, but you can't make it great. So let us bring forth a brother that helped us tremendously. We all know him. Ephraim. Okay. All right. Let's bring him up. Ephraim. Come on up. We have one on the list. That's up. Great. Welcome, Yahweh.
Okay. Would you like to say something? Okay. Give it to everyone here. I'm pleased to be among this group. I am a traditional ruler and a businessman. When it comes to business, I was in the importation of stationaries, but I've retired now. So now I'm into integrated agriculture and mine. Who you talk too much? Because most of us are tired. But uh, whoever wants to go into organic farming or agriculture, have a way of getting genuine lands, which I can even show you. I didn't even know that I was coming to you know, talk about this. But at least I have the way we obtain land from Ghana. I have documents here to show. When it's come to mining, which is uh, part of my business, I have documents here to show. So I think I'll just give my number. Who want free cons? If you want to consult me for free. I will do that, assist anybody here. You want to go into agriculture, I'm there for you. I will show you how you can get genuine land and the type of crop to be planted, and that will help you. My number is 0245 678 325. 0245 678 Three two five. My email address is Ofakwami76 at gmail.com. Ofakwami is W O F A K W A M E 76 at gmail.com. Anybody who wants to stay, who wants to do business in Ghana, just consult me. I'll give you free advice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're about to bring on now our brother, Milana. Um, we, I just got a note that we have a couple of youth here, youth entrepreneurs, so will you please stand now? Yeah, yes. Nikita and your sister, will you please stand? Youth Woo! entrepreneurs. Um, mentoring them, so we're thankful for the youth. We want to encourage the youth to be in business, so this is a perfect example. So please, let's patronize them out here. So, without further ado, we all, we all know Dr. Milano, but now we're going to hear from him. We had the workshop last night with the citizenship. He's the founder of the Ministry of the Future, works with the, with the uh, Ghana government, the Office of the President of Affairs, uh, in the past foreign affairs. Uh, I've been knowing him since 1990 when I first came to Ghana. Dr. Malala. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, I've only been given five minutes to speak, so I'm just going to get right to the meat of what needs to be said. Uh, most of you who attended the lecture last night, uh, you heard me dilate on uh, what is the roadmap to get citizenship? But my message to you, the best thing I can say within the five minutes right now, for Africans of the diaspora, for God's sake, get your paperwork in order before you go stretching out to buy land, going to different agencies to get consultation, telling you what to do. Get your papers in order. Because most of our people come with a visa immediately go into purchasing land because there's no requirement constitutionally as far as I know that inhibits you from buying land and you don't have to be a citizen. But think about it. If you only have a visa, you don't even have a resident permit, you come and buy land. Now what if you have a dispute with a Ghanaian? And you know the first thing the Ghanaian is going to do, he's going to go down to immigration and report you. Believe me. I'm going to tell you that now. He's going to go and report you to get you out. And where does your money and your investment go? So the first thing you have to understand is when you come here, get your paperwork in order. And Ministry of the Future is the foremost organization that is about that. We have helped so many brothers and sisters 
not only to get their papers in order, but we, I'm not saying we alone. This battle has been going on. I came to Ghana in 1987. I came to Africa in 1971. So I have about 50 years behind my back. I've lived in Dakar, Senegal. I lived in Bamako, Mali. I lived in Banjul, the Gambia. I lived in Guinea Bissau, and I'm here in Ghana. You understand what I'm saying? So I know what I'm talking about. And what I'm saying is, the African of the diaspora, when you look at the timing that we're in right now, it is not by accident that you are coming home. It is only the African of the diaspora, in my opinion, of 50 years of experience, that can help to save Africa. Africa has no other salvation to move forward unless the Africans of the diaspora who built the United States of America to use that same skill, that same zest and energy to come and build this continent. Because the Chinese are not going to do it. After the fuck, the Chinese are going to do it. They ain't going to do it. They're coming here to get down safe. But the African of the diaspora has love investments. Love investment. We ask nothing but from return, only to give us love. We want to come home. But in coming home, I am telling you, first thing you got to do, you got to get your resident permit in order. So, because we have worked hard. When I say we, I'm talking about the Africans of the diaspora who's been here over 35, 40 years. We have been doing educational outreach, advocacy with the immigration. Many of you right now, you know, you have it sort of easy. Charlie, if you had been here about 15 years ago, you go down to immigration, they look at you and say, what are you doing here? Really, I mean, virtually just get the hell out of the way. Now, they are sensitized and preferential treatment now is being applied to Africans of the diaspora. The year of return did not fall from the sky. The year of return came as a result of the hard work that we were doing in the 1990s. David was with us. The Ankara was with us. Uh, Ima Kuz from Cape Coast, she was with us. We did a hell of a lot of work to sensitize the government of Ghana. And then, boom, I took the giant leap in 2015 with Nikwe Sikwate, who was the vice chair of the African Union, and we went forward with the president, John Dramani Mahama, and he gave us right to return. Right to return, and the right to return, the right to return is the foundational basis of the year of return. And the year of return proved the power of the Africans of the diaspora, particularly African Americans. We brought $2.2 billion to this economy. Did you hear what I said? The Africans of the diaspora, particularly African Americans, we brought $2.2 billion into this economy. So what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, it, it really, for me, over the decades, you would come as tourists, spend your money, come here with your dashikis, your cameras, and say, oh, I've been to Africa, kiss the soil, go back. <laughs> you don't change the narrative. The narrative, if your mama, if your mama and your daddy your mommy and your baba is in the village living in abject poverty. It doesn't make any difference how you look in America. With your brand new car, your college degrees, the world looks at you through the eyes of Africa. As long as Africa is in poverty, they see us as niggas all over the world. I'm telling you. So we have to change the narrative in Africa. We have to change the narrative of the village with our mother, with our father. And I said, as I said at the outset, I'm absolutely convinced that the only element, the only people that can change and make the paradigm shift to liberate Africa, for Africa to become self-reliant, is the Africans of the diaspora. And the African of the diaspora are the ones who are the descendants of the 400 years transatlantic slave trade. We have been through the fire. We have been tested. And we have the skill. We have the zest. We have the zeal. 
We have the second wind to come back and build this continent. If you went through the fire and you built America, the most treacherous, most beast nation in the world, and you were able enough to survive, you should be able to come back here and just walk on water until you should be able to do that. I'm telling you. Yes, brothers and sisters, you got to get off this, this romantic thing, thinking you're coming back to Africa. Oh, you got Africans here who are fast-talking Kwamis. They're waiting for you. I cry how much money you got? How much money you bring? So you have to have your eyes open. But I'm saying for our freedom, for us to go forward, this is the place. This place is in prophecy. This place is in prophecy. We have come on a journey, full circle, 6,000 years. These ethnic groups here are not from here. You don't know that, do you? They're from Israel. They're from Mesopotamia, where Syria, Iraq, and even as far as where it's India. The ethnic groups here in Ghana. And by extension, we are of those Hebrews that were taken from Israel and taken into slavery over to America. We are the people. You have to recognize that. And now we are coming full circle. So ladies and gentlemen, let me just say this. Because I've done a lot, I was on my feet last night, three hours talking. I only got two hours of sleep this morning, but I don't get any sleep. Because the kind of work that I have to do is 24 seven. But I thank you very much. I have my legal counsel here. Because if you're gonna come to Ghana, I've had the experience. You better have somebody to watch your back. Right. You better have somebody to watch your back. Right. And the best thing to do is get legal counsel. Because we got charlatans here. Plenty of them. And so I'm sad to say that, but we got charlatans. But what God has ordained, no man, no woman can change. We will build Ghana. We built America. Long live Ghana. Long live Africa. Good evening all, and welcome back home. I think my brother has derived some energy from me. And he's, uh, he's speaking like our former president, the regional yes. 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 When every water gets to the boiling point, you cannot stop the pressure. Nobody can stop us. We can stop ourselves when we start thinking to encourage one another rather than to go and undermine who does this, who can do this, who was first, and who will be the last. Africa. Africa, the high of God. The eye of knowledge, the eye of peace. The world will not know no peace, and the world cannot operate. That's why the United Nations continue to wallow. Because when your birthright is taken from you, you need to be reinstated and restored. I say, when your birthright is taken from you, you need to be restored. And you coming back, I can hear the world drums of your feet saying, we are going forward. Let us go forward with the foundation pillars our forebearers have put in place. That together, together, we will be doing it. And the way we know that Africa Africa is the liberation center of the whole universe. But I'm allowed to tell you that Ghana lies in the equator. Though 
God bless you. Let me say, excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry, Dali, just one other remark. Uh, Ministry of the Future is opening up, and, and God knows I've been working on this for 35 years. We've, we, we've been trying to get an embassy. We need an embassy. If, we get in if you get in trouble, I know you're not going to run down to the American Embassy. <laughs> you're not going to run down to the British High Commission. Or else you wouldn't be coming here in the first place. You understand what I'm saying? So we, Ministry of the Future has secured just over here on Spintex Road. We will have a grand opening, a grand finale, grand opening of the African Diaspora Business Development Cultural Center. We will have rooms, cubicles for business entrepreneurs who are coming for the first time. So I'm just telling you right now, stand by about three weeks down the road. We will have it open. It's going to be for family, a whole day of fun and fair, food, games and all. We will have an office and that office is for you. We will have legal counsel in there for you. You understand what I'm saying? So those of you who are interested and going forward trying to get your papers straight, our secretary Patience is here by the uh, banner that's Patience. She has applications. I would encourage you to get it because while you're talking about doing business, I reiterate what I said before. You can do your business. Go ahead and put your money out there. But Charlie, if you ain't got your papers in order, <laughs> you are in a hell of a situation. Do the right thing. Get your paperwork straight first. Then you can buy the land. Then you can register your business. Then you can go here and there. But if you don't have your papers straight, you are open season for somebody to derail you. Thank you. All right, let's give them a round of applause. Give the glory most for another round of applause. <laughs> We've got our legal representative here. So, family, let's give our, the whole crew, the members, a round of applause. I think we're going to close out and we're going to network. This time, we've got Dr. Sarah. He rolls us out this section, and then we're going to network and get another family member. Dr. Sarah, close us out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that uh, we cannot be in a dormant situation and let our spirits rise. So, can we? Respectfully, stand up. Feel relaxed, feel satisfied, fill your hearts with gratitude that a divine manifestation for us, as progressive Africans, we have succeeded in another great landmark moving forward. Like the former president of Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah said, forward ever, backwards never. May the guiding spirit of creation that lives in us May all the energies that have brought us together for this vision be made manifest in our life, continuing into various generations that will come behind us, so that with our hard work, resilience, we will be able to achieve for ourselves in our lifetime and after our dwell here on the planet Earth in our physical bodies, a prosperity index that is going to give us the pride as an African. If we all believe in it, let's say so be it. So be it. Thank you. Thank you, family. Let's network. Let's get noise.